I'm going to be running some benchmarks to show you the difference between uh, Mac OS 10.14 and 10.15. Now the reason for this is Apple has been caught purposely slowing down their iPhones. So one thing that I want to illustrate is they are in fact doing this again with their operating system with Macs. It may not be super apparent and it may not be hard evidence into this because when they make new software, it's generally designed for a faster computer. So when you run newer software on an older device, obviously it's going to be slower. That's just kind of there. But one of the things is they've removed tons of features to make it lighter and then they claim all these benefits of better battery life, better performance, and that's really not the case. So when it comes down to it, when you're trying to decide the difference between 10.14 or upgrade to 10.15 or even 11 now is out, it's really not something that I would consider you doing without doing tons of hardware upgrades. And unless you have an iMac that's upgradable, or a Mac Pro or something, then it's it's really not worthwhile, so I wouldn't do it. So now one thing that I want to get out of the way just really quick, I'm not trying to insult anyone or anything like that. When I used to work on computers as my job, I don't recall a single person coming in who knew anything about computers who owned a Mac. And I'm not saying that everyone who buys a Mac doesn't know anything about computers, it's just that the market share for Apple computers is they try to base it off of simplicity. They want to have the easiest experience for anyone to just get on a Mac and you can just do whatever you need to do. And that's that's what Apple is after. And there, there's no arguing that. that is, that's what they're doing. But one of the things is that a lot of people unknowingly will upgrade their Mac over time, not really taking into consideration that they are running software that's designed for a faster computer. And Apple does release these updates just to prove that you don't have to buy a new computer to get the latest software, but at the same time, it is going to be running slower. And the difference between 10.14, 10.15 is they didn't really add much to 10.15. They just took away a bunch of features from 10.14, like 32-bit support. Now, Obviously, we shouldn't be hanging on to legacy apps. That goes without saying. There's security vulnerabilities as well as the well, the lack of support because they're no longer supported. But one of the things is if you find a developer who made a program for a 32-bit operating system, they're no longer active, that's it. You can't use it anymore. It's, so even if there's software out there that's for 32-bit, you're completely comfortable running it, you've never had issues, maybe it's an offline program, so there's really no security vulnerabilities with it, you just can't run it at all because Apple has completely removed the functionality for this. So with the new iMac that I got, well, new used, new to me, in the last video I showed how when I was installing 10.14, it wouldn't let me install because it said that I had to upgrade the firmware. During that, what I ended up doing was I installed 10.14, it then converted to APFS and then I upgraded to 10.15. I did all of the updates, all of the firmware updates. So this iMac is as new as it can get. It's as up to date as it can get. And I ran all of the benchmarks, got all of my results, and then I formatted the computer. I went back to 10.14 and that's where I ended up running all of the 10.14 benchmarks. So those benchmarks are actually reversed. I did 10.15 first, then I did 10.14. However, spoiler alert, 10.14 still came out ahead in every test. Well, almost every test. There was uh, some of them that were really back and forth, so I just scrapped those results entirely because I ran three benchmarks on NovaBench on 10.15, and I was getting really random results, really low ones, really high ones, so having an average between three just didn't really make sense for that, so I ran five. After running the averages and then comparing them, it was like 0.5%, like half of a percent better on 10.14. But really, when it comes down to it, I could probably run those benchmarks another five times on both operating systems, and it might come out with 10.15 ahead, because that's within margin of error. So I just completely scrapped those results, I'm not doing those. So this is only Geekbench results and then a stress test. Now one thing that I did find really, really weird is that on 10.14, my 32 gig RAM kit comes up as 1600 megahertz, which is what it is. But for some reason, Geekbench recognizes it as 800 megahertz. And when I've upgraded to 10.15, 
Mac OS recognizes it at 800 megahertz, and those Geekbench results also 800 megahertz. So I'm not sure if that comes into play. Maybe, maybe that's something that Apple's doing, lowering the clock speed of memory. That would kind of explain why the results were so low. Now, just one last thing before we actually get into these benchmarks is again, I'm not trying to insult anyone, but the truth of the matter is more Apple users are very simple people who are not very tech savvy at all. That's why they buy them. So as a result of that, I wanted to do these benchmarks without touching anything. I left the entire thing full of dust. I did not change any thermal compound. So that's to give a real world expectation between what it would be if a normal average Apple user is on 10.14 and the amount of performance that you would lose if you upgrade to 10.15. I'm going to show you the benchmarks now, and then we will come back here, and I will show you all the comparisons between all of the different results, and then I will show you the percentages of how much better 10.14 is. And then before we go, I will show you how to stop macOS from upgrading, so that way you can lock your Mac on 10.14. You never have to worry about it accidentally upgrading, and then you have to wipe everything just to downgrade. So let's get into the benchmarks. So this is Mac OS 10.14.6. I'm gonna start running the benchmark here on Geekbench 5. You can see we got 719 for the single core score and 1717 for the multi-core. Run it again. Seven hundred and twenty and then sixteen hundred and eighty-three. Last test here. Seven hundred and eleven and fifteen hundred and fifty two. So now let's go to the stress test. So I'm just running the yes command in terminal and then I'm leaving Unigen Valley running. Max CPU temperature was 105 degrees and the max GPU was 89 degrees. The max CPU throttling that I ended up seeing here was 2.9 gigahertz. You can see we are on 10.15.7, still Geekbench 5, so we're going to run the test. Got 695 on this one for the single core score and 1552 for the multi core score. So let's run it again. Seven hundred and six and then 1563. Run it one more time. Six hundred and ninety five again, then fifteen hundred and forty six. Onto the benchmark, again, yes command on the CPU, all cores activated 100% usage, hit 105 degrees on the CPU, and then 89 degrees on the GPU. CPU throttled at 2.6 gigahertz this time. So those were the benchmarks that I ran, it was just Geekbench three times and I'm just averaging the scores for it. So the single core score for 10.14 was 717. That's the average across the three benchmarks that I ran. The multi-core score was 1651. And then when we compare that to 10.15, the single core score on that was 699. So that means that 10.15 is 2.57% slower than 10.14. And then when we look at the multi-core score of 1554, that means that 10.15 is 6.24% slower than 10.14. You're losing features, and it's slower. Now let's get into the stress test results. Both of them capped temperatures, and they both thermal throttle just because it's an old Mac and it's old thermal compound. So I mean, it makes sense. So this comparison is just to see which one did the worst the least. However, the frames per second on the GPU, I didn't get a good result because every time it would switch between scenes, it would cut down between like 0 and 12 frames per second, so I really couldn't get a good reading on which one was actually slower. So on both operating systems, the GPU capped out at 89 degrees Celsius. That's spicy. And then the CPU, like this is just a little i5, a third gen i5, like this isn't anything crazy. And we hit 105 degrees Celsius on both tests. So really the only thing we're looking at here is which one thermal throttled the least worst. So on 10.14, the lowest clock speed that it ended up reaching while it was thermal throttling was 2.9 gigahertz, where on 10.15, it was 2.6 gigahertz. 
So we ended up losing 300 megahertz on the CPU on 10.15. That doesn't sound like a huge amount, 300 megahertz, but when you look at the percentage, that's 11.54% worse. That's how much performance is robbed. You're losing just over 11.5% of the CPU performance while thermal throttling, just by running 10.15. There's nothing different. This was, this was two clean installs running only the programs that I had for benchmarking. And also you have to take into consideration that all of these scores I was screen recording while I was doing it. So some of the performance was lost to screen recording. So it's not necessarily after the score numbers, but the difference between them. But I feel like those are more than definitive results to show that 10.14 is just superior. You have dark mode, you have APFS, 32-bit support, everything that you need is there. As well as even looking at other programs and everything online, they usually say that it requires 10.13 or 10.14 to run. So far, I haven't run into a single application that requires 10.15 or higher in order to run. So there's no limitations there, at least for anything that I found that I use. If there is, then feel free to leave a comment down below on a reason that 10.15 might be beneficial. But for these use cases and everything that I found, 10.14 is better. And now this is an iMac. This isn't something that you're going to be bringing with you. So you also have to take into consideration that if you're using more of the computer to do less, that also means that the computer is going to be running harder. So it's going to be using more battery life if you're running it on a MacBook. And that's where that kind of falls into the iPhone situation where Apple was caught intentionally slowing down phones. 10.15 is gonna use more power, it's gonna use more battery life, it's slowing down the computer. All of the scores that I ended up getting showed that 10.15 is a worse operating system, at least on older hardware. It might be optimized better for newer hardware, but in this situation right here where the common user is going to be taking their current computer and just upgrading to the latest operating system, it's going to be worse. So the results are there. Now, I just want to quickly show you how you can stop the computer from upgrading. So right now I'm on 10.14, so I'm going to go over to the screen recording here. I'm going to show you how you can block this update. So then you will get the latest app updates and everything, but it's not going to upgrade the operating system and you're not going to be pestered with a notification telling you to upgrade the operating system. So now that we're back on 10.14, we're going to go over to terminal, start typing in sudo software update dash dash ignore and in quotations, Mac OS Catalina quotation. And that has to be case sensitive. Now we can just enter the password here. And there you can see that it is now ignored. So we're going to search for updates. So it's only Mac OS 10.14 updates now. You can see there's no 10.15 update here. So now we can just install these. And I got to restart the computer. Okay, well that's it. It's super simple. It's literally just one command. You never have to worry again and your Mac is going to stay at its optimal performance for well, as long as you have it. So I hope uh, you found something insightful here or share this to someone who thinks that the latest Mac operating system is the greatest thing that's out there because these results show that it's not, at least on this computer it's not. Leave some comments down below on something that I could have touched on. Again, like I mentioned, uh, some software or reasons that 10.15 might be better. Uh, I also ran some of these benchmarks on my old MacBook Pro before I sold it and 11 was whew, way worse, way worse. I ended up losing like three hours of battery life on uh, Mac OS 11 on that thing. That is just an absolute train wreck. I think that Mac OS 11 is definitely Apple trying to pull another iPhone situation where they are intentionally slowing down computers to make sure that you upgrade to the new ARM based ones because that operating system is an absolute nightmare. Not to mention how you can't even change the lock screen wallpaper. Like what is that? That's the stupidest thing. Like they just don't want anyone to have anything different. They just they want everyone to like conform into like this one operating system that is no different than anyone else. So all the computers are the same, all of the operating systems are the same. 
nothing looks different. So again, 10.14 is better because you you can change your log screen wallpaper. That's that's it. That's uh, that's, that's the video. Uh, I'm gonna have another video on the iMac uh, later. I have to wait until I sell some crap so I can buy some crap because I'm gonna do another upgrade to this to make it like the final thing or whatever. Uh, so for Apple stuff, that's it for now. I'm not gonna be posting any like Mac videos or whatever for a while. So if you don't like Apple stuff, then get subscribed because it's not gonna be much Mac stuff in the next few videos. Or if you like Mac stuff, then get subscribed because there's gonna be another video later on. If you you, uh, want to support the channel there's a join button where you can join the members program then you get exclusive access to everything you don't have to wait for the videos when they go live you can just watch them whenever so as soon as the video is done it gets uploaded members can watch them whenever they want and then for the regular viewers that are out there then you can still watch all of the videos you just have to wait until they're scheduled upload dates um, all all of the tiers are the same it's literally just a donation price so if you go for the cheapest one then you get everything if you go for the most expensive one you get everything there's really no difference between any of them. So just you decide what you feel the content is worth to you. What, what do you want to pay for it? And if you don't want to, then that's cool too. Uh, like the video. If you like to dislike it, that's awesome. Or I don't know, don't do any of it. I'm not telling you what to do.